It's Alyssa from Rome Wise, your go-to guide to Rome. On today's video, I want to share with you some amazing and beautiful places you can visit just outside Rome. There is so much to see in the Lazio region besides Rome, so with this video, I hope to inspire you to explore a little bit further afield, especially if you've already been to Rome or if you have extra time or if you just like seeing some off the beaten path and exclusive sites. And for those of you with a cruise stop here in Rome at Civitavecchia, many of these sites make for a great shore excursion. They also make for a wonderful day trip from Rome itself. If you're new to my channel, RomeWise is your go-to guide to Rome where I bring you the best of Rome and sometimes beyond, as in this video, with all my best insider tips for visiting the Eternal City. So hit that like button, subscribe, and let's get this video started. I recently went on a press trip with a wonderful tour company called Roma Experiences. This trip was in turn sponsored by Regione Lazio, which means the Lazio region, which is where Rome is. There is a lot to see outside of Rome and the Regione Lazio was trying to promote more tourism in these areas outside the city. Now we did this trip over four days and three nights so that we could fit in a lot of things and try lots of different kinds of places to stay and things to do. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the visits by type. I'm also going to show you where we ate and where we stayed. I have a page all about this on the website so you can check that out and in the description below I'm going to link to every place that I talk about in this video. On this trip we focused on the northern Lazio coast. The area is well known for its beautiful seaside, Etruscan tombs, Roman ruins, and lush farmland and nature reserves. Basically you can really take your pick with what kind of off the beaten path adventure you want to have in this area. Northern Lazio was once part of Etruria a part of northern Italy that was once inhabited by the Etruscans. Two of the best known sites for visiting Etruscan tombs are Cerveteri and Tarquinia. Cerveteri is in a massive park and you can even go hiking there. There's some waterfalls, there's some beautiful nature hikes, so you can combine your tomb visit with a nature visit. Tarquinia is probably most famous for its really, really well-preserved frescoes inside of these tombs. I am here at Cerveteri to visit the site of Etruscan tombs with a wonderful tour company called Roma Experience who sponsored this trip. So the Lazio region, the Regione Lazio, they're trying to promote this area because if you're interested in Rome, you're interested in ancient Roman history, this is connected to ancient Rome. These are the people that were here before the Romans. They were also in Rome. The Etruscans have so much to do with the ancient Rome you see today in the Roman Forum. They're the ones who drained it and built the Cloaca Maxima. So there's really a lot to know about the Etruscans, but you need a good guide to bring it all to life. The Etruscans lived in this area from around the 9th century BCE until 27 BCE when the last Etruscan cities were absorbed into Rome. If you're interested in Etruscan civilization, here in Rome you can visit the wonderful Villa Giulia Museum dedicated to Etruscan culture. There you will find plenty of artifacts and even some tombs. The Vatican Museum also has an extensive collection of Etruscan pottery and other artifacts but there is nothing like seeing these tombs in person and going in and out of them and walking around them. It, it just, you can feel the history, you can feel the centuries. Put the pick up in the drive, chase the dawn, burn the light, let's go. So I have been to see these tombs before here at Cerveteri, but not with a guide, and it is a completely different experience. Rome Experience has brought three guides <laughs> on this trip, and they are all amazing. And it just brings the place completely to life. Absolutely worth doing. So we are now walking uh, along this path, which is the City of the Dead Necropolis here in Cerveteri. This is a place full of Etruscan tombs, 
and it's of lots of different eras, so you really get an understanding of the history of these pre-Roman people. Not only did we get to visit Cerveteri and Tarquinia, we also got to visit a third archaeological site called Vulci. There is a very special Etruscan tomb at Vulci. It's almost never open to the public, and Roma experiences got us in. We were able to visit the tomb of Francois, named for archaeologist Alessandro Francois, who discovered this tomb in 1857. Unfortunately, it was a bit plundered, so we don't get to see the frescoes that used to be there, but it is still a very special feeling to visit this tomb. And because Vulci is a huge archaeological park, we went to visit the Roman ruins there as well. Along with the Etruscans, Romans inhabited this area from around the 3rd century BCE all the way through the time of Augustus and a bit beyond, before being completely abandoned in around the 8th century. While not as grand and dramatic as the Colosseum and the Roman Forum, Vulci nevertheless offers us a crowd-free and tranquil way to explore ancient Roman civilization and architecture. One of the owners may have been Marcus Vinicius, the adopted grandson of Emperor Augustus. We were also able to explore the Mithraeum on this site. A Mithraeum was a sacred space for worshippers of Mithra. Mithraism was an ancient religion that eventually was displaced when Christianity took hold. However, we can still see around Rome some of these Mithraea. What's really unusual about this Mithraeum is that it is above ground. Typically, and certainly in Rome, whenever you visit a Mithraeum, they are underground. One of the best things about this park is this really beautiful bucolic lunch spot called Casaletto Mengarelli. It not only has beautiful views over the park, but the food is absolutely fantastic. And after lunch, you can have a nice short walk through the woods over to this sweet little lake. And just outside Bulci is the Badia Castle with its Roman bridge built on top of an Etruscan bridge. It is worth a stop if you're in the area. Speaking of Roman ruins, I absolutely loved our visit to the Terme Taurine, also known as the Baths of Trajan. So we are here right outside of Civitavecchia, which is where many of the cruise ships dock and leave from. And this is an amazing ruin. It is enormous. It's a Roman bath. They're called the Terme di Taurine. Terme are baths. Taurine is a Latin root meaning bull because there is a myth about how a bull uh, put its hoof down and outspring this water. So they're named for that, but they're also called the Terme di Traiano, the Baths of Trajan, Emperor Trajan, who expanded on them. So in the beginning, they were part of the Republican age, that means pre-Roman Empire, and then during the Roman Empire, they were expanded upon. So you see two very different um, construction styles, uh, brickling styles, materials. It's very evident when you walk through these ruins. It's an easy visit. You need about an hour. It is amazing and it's so close to the port. This is a wonderful, wonderful visit to do if you are docking in Civitavecchia and you have a day and you wanna do a short excursion and you don't feel like going all the way into Rome. So I'm doing this with Roma Experience. They treated me here, but I highly recommend this. They will come pick you up right under your ship, bring you here to these ruins. Uh, you'll have a tour of them. You can see we are alone here. This is an incredible way to see ancient Roman ruins without the crowds. You can include this as part of a bigger excursion where you include some other sites. There are so many wonderful places to visit in the area, Etruscan tombs, beautiful churches, or you can simply have a wonderful leisurely seafood lunch right in the town of Civitavecchia and make it back in plenty of time to your ship. Besides ancient Etruscan and Roman ruins, there are plenty of small towns in the area that have Renaissance or even medieval sites that you can visit. Roma Experiences brought us to Tuscania that has two wonderful Romanesque churches, St. Peter and St. Mary Major. 
We were treated to a tour with a local art historian who really brought these places to life. We also visited the town of Cerveteri with its imposing Renaissance era Palazzo Ruspoli. Roma Experiences arranged for us to have a private visit inside the palazzo. Unfortunately, no photos were permitted. The beaches along this Lazio coast are popular with Romans as a destination in summer. We love Santa Marinella, Santa Severa, La Dispoli. These are all sites we visited on this trip. One option for an easy overnight or even day trip from Rome is to visit the castle of Santa Severa. I couldn't believe it when I found out it's actually a hostel and you can stay there. Rates are affordable and I had a room to myself. A simple yet comfortable and very quiet room with this view. The castle is a site you can visit, and we did, but Roma Experiences also arranged for us to be able to visit the baptistry. You guys, we are here inside of this baptistry, which is never open. It is amazing. The baptistry is stunning and has been frescoed almost entirely by Antoniazio Romano, and it's been recently restored. There's actually nowhere to eat inside of the castle, so we had dinner in the town of Santa Severa nearby. Near the castle is a wild and beautiful sanctuary. There are also ruins of Pirgi, an ancient Etruscan city, but you really need to visit with a local historian the way we did because they're a little hard to spot and hard to understand what you're looking at. As I mentioned, the whole area is full of beautiful nature reserves like Santa Severa, Santa Marinella, and the town of Tolfa. All right, I saved one of our visits for next to last because it was so special. Did you know, outside of Rome is Italy's largest alpaca farm. This is gonna be really amazing. We're also here visiting with a couple of people from, who've come from Rome. They are uh, differently abled, we'll say. Uh, autistic and another one has another very rare uh, genetic condition and it's said that these animals are really really therapeutic so it's going to be a really beautiful experience in so many ways. It is just amazing to see these animals. They're so, so cute. Um, They're giving us a tour. They're explaining how they keep them separated, uh, males and females, until they're ready to mate. They're so cute. Let's go take a look. So soft. So soft. It's so amazing and you can give them food, you can touch them, you can pet their backs. You're not supposed to pet their little, um, it's called a chufo on their head or their tail end, kind of like a horse. Um, they could kick. but. They're so sweet and so soft and we are just, everybody has a huge smile on our faces and it's just lovely to watch the interaction um, between the alpacas themselves and also uh, between them and all of us visiting. It's, it's just really beautiful. What an amazing and special visit that was. And finally, I did save the best for last. We stayed at three different places on this trip, something for everybody. The Hostel of Santa Severa, the beautiful Agriturismo at Piani della Marina, and on the last night, we were treated to a stay at La Posta Vecchia. La Posta Vecchia is, without doubt, one of the most luxurious, sumptuous places you can stay in Lazio, if not in all of Italy.
On this last day of this amazing tour with Roma Experience, sponsored by the Regione Lazio, which is the Lazio region, we are staying at this incredible place called La Posta Vecchia. It is unique. It used to be a dépendance, like a side building of the Odescalchi Castle, which is just uh, to the side of this building. That castle is unvisitable because it is still lived in by the family and they rent it out for private events. But this building, is today um, a hotel. So John Paul Getty purchased it and renovated it and turned it into this incredible place. There are only 19 rooms. Each room is different from the other. Uh, they are so, so beautiful. And the entire building faces the sea. Underneath, when they were renovating, they discovered this Roman domus. Uh, so it is an incredible place to visit, this huge excavation underground. It is like visiting an archaeological museum. It's just super well done. And we've had a beautiful, beautiful 24 hours here. I've used the heated indoor pool. We had an amazing dinner last night with their award-winning chef and a beautiful, beautiful buffet breakfast this morning with pretty much everything you can imagine from a, a wonderful buffet breakfast. So if you want to do something very special, very uh, personalized, contact Roma Experience. They can arrange tours of all lengths and topics and budgets. They do lots of tours in Rome as well, uh, but you can let them know what you want to do, the kind of things you want to see. This trip that we're on is four days, three nights, but you could easily make it shorter or longer. Um, it's definitely something to do, especially if you've visited Rome before, or if you really are a history buff and art lover. Uh, you'll see so much more than you can even imagine.